Yeah. So you can, yeah, let's uh, cover and you can skip right ahead to the next one. Yeah, that was, as I was telling you about my story, you can't see the slides very well, can't you? Let me know if you can read what's on there, because I can't. Well, anyway, the, the first slide was just about my story. I'll give it. Nowadays, I'm, I've been a commercial photographer for a few years, and I shoot for magazines and brands, for blogs, websites, packaging. Uh, I do some stock food photography and cookbooks, like everything around uh, food and culinary products, really. So let's skip to the next slide. And the one after that, yeah, that's what I currently do. That's just my website with my portfolio. And let's skip to the next. So happy to be here with all of you. Okay, so let's start with the smartphone food photography. And I think we should maybe start by talking about uh, the lenses that your phone has. And nowadays they often have multiple lenses even. And sometimes for some modes, use a combination of those. Um, there's usually one that has the best specifications that's mostly used in the general mode, and which is a wide angle lens. So that means that with your phones, you can usually, you have even a wider field of view than with your, uh, with your eyes often. So um, if you take it on top of a table, you can usually get a lot of that table inside your frame with the smartphones. But a wide angle also means quite some distortion. So the elements that are placed towards the margins of your frame will probably look like they're tilting a bit to the margins. And if you're shooting from a straight angle, um, the horizon, horizon lines might look, warp, might look warped or um, distorted. So the preferred angle really is for smartphone photography is the overhead. I would actually advise you to mostly, except for some subjects like tall subjects, like hamburgers, for instance, you wouldn't you wouldn't shoot a hamburger from the top right because yeah, then would you see you would see a bun. So that one you should obviously shoot straight ahead. Just put your phone on the table and take the picture straight or, or slightly angled. But mostly the best angle for phone photography is really the overhead. Okay, let's see the next slide. So on your phone, you have different modes. You have the um, general camera mode, which I think is, in generally speaking, the best to use, just the one that pops up usually, normally. Um, and then you have other modes, like, for instance, the portrait mode. Sometimes uses a combination of cameras of different lenses of your phone, and sometimes not. What it definitely does is it tries to separate the hero subject from the background and blurs the background. So it creates like an artificial bookie effect like uh, cameras would do, but in cameras it's the inherent function of, of the lens, whereas in the smartphones it's the software. So it's artificially created with a processing algorithm that separates and then artificially blurs the background. All right, so we were just talking about the different modes you have on your camera phones, on your phone cameras. So um, I was talking about the portrait mode, which creates this artificial blur in the background. But sometimes I would use it, sometimes use it when you have a clear separation between your main subject and the background. So if you're doing a flat lay and there's just a plate, which is not very high, I wouldn't advise to do it because it often blurs the things just around it, which are actually in the same focal plane. Because when you use a camera, you have a plane of things that are in focus. It's not just a point in the middle, but it's everything around that point. And you know, they have to, if you shoot with a wide aperture, you have a blurred foreground and you might have a blurred background. But everything in between, everything on that line or plane would be in focus. So I find that the portrait mode sometimes blurs things that are in the same um, plane of focus. And then you can actually, it looks actually very artificial. So then you can see it's not um, a proper camera, but it's, something that the software gets wrong. And that I find happens even more so in the food mode because that actually really blurs just everything around your hero subject, which often makes it very clear, immediately clear to my eyes that it has been a camera phone and not a real camera, phone camera, and doesn't look, doesn't look weird, doesn't look good to me. So I would just advise to use the general mode and then maybe in post-production, like in editing, 
uh, create a little blur around if you like that, or uh, take try the photo, take the same shot with the different modes, and then afterwards look at what you like most and select that one for publishing for the purpose you want to give to that picture. And with that, let's skip to the next slide. Let's go on. So for focusing with your smartphone, is it's actually very easy. You just take your phone, I guess most of you know it, and just tap on the area you want to be in focus. Um, when you then want to get the perfect exposure for your shot, you just keep your finger tapped down and then the focus will lock and an exposure adjustment slider will appear and then you can adjust the exposure of the image to get it well exposed. So that's a useful thing to know. I would advise you to use in the settings, you can get some grid lights on your screen, which I find very useful to frame um, your picture in a better way. So you can get the lines straight and you can also uh, strategically put the hero subjects or the most important subjects in your frame in areas that are most interesting that create like a pleasant aesthetical tension to the eye. We will get to this again in, in more detail later. Another good thing to do is when you're doing action shots with your phone, so when you're doing a pouring shot or you're sprinkling some sugar or something like that, uh, to activate the burst mode where the camera very quickly takes a succession of pictures. And then you can